Hello and welcome back to part 2 of a first look at the climax here in Railroads Online. In the last video I was able to get this, despite the engine being very, very slow, I was able to get this train of 10 stake cars from the freight depot up to the sawmill and now that I've loaded the wagons with lumber we're going to do the return trip. First I need to shunt the wagons back to make sure that when we run and take the engine through the run round, we don't accidentally hit the wagons and throw them off the track. Right, but I remember this uh, climax thing. That compressor I saw that that's for like air brakes. Although I'm not sure. No, but this. These wagons don't have air brakes. Like all they've got is just uh, these uh, hand brakes. That's it. Although I guess presumably just the air brakes on the local would just work on the locomotive. It's kind of like the independent brake that you see on modern diesel electric locomotives in the US. I always found this feature of this things like cylinders and whatever that is on the climax to be quite fascinating, just seeing how fast that spins like it almost makes it seem like a wasted effort. Like for it to be spinning so fast and yet the engine to still be moving so slowly. I think when we that's a point because this because this head shunt is on a pretty steep incline. Just let the engine roll back down under gravity. I guess it's like with the uh Fustinio railway in Wales did with with their gravity trains. I think they would have the wagon, once the wagons were loaded with slate, the, or they would just have some people sitting on them to, presumably, with like a bugle to act as a, to act as a horn, and then they would just roll down the line to Port, uh, to Port Maddock, and then the slate would be sent away on ships. Now of course the Stinyol Railway has a full fleet of uh, steamboat engines, including, uh, including these up fairly uh, earth and endless. David Lloyd George, I think, was he actually Welsh? I haven't got my facts right. I remember I first got introduced to the concept of a double fairly locomotive, thanks to, I think, in 2007, I did go to Dunedin, the, I think it's the Otago Settlers Museum in Dunedin, down in the South Island. Um, and I did see a double, uh, the double fairly E175 there, and I think that was what got. And I think that's how I got started. I got interested in double fairlies. But I think I also remember seeing JA 1274 from Dunedin. But the only surviving pictures that we've got from when we were in Dunedin, I think, was this succinct at the railway station with a couple of DJ class diesel locomotives. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, speaking of DJs, uh, at some point I will be going back into train simulation revisiting the DJ class. That's, I think, that the DJ is one of the few New Zealand locomotive designs that's actually in train simulator. Except because I'm still, because I still get dreadful, absolutely dreadful performance from the Midland Line route, I think I'll just have to run the DJ on the South Africa. Right, I just realised I need to uh, set up the coupler on this end. Right, there we go. Oh, hang about. What are these, like, what are these weird little circular things 
on either side of the you can't really call it a buffer beam of the pit stop but yeah what are these weird little circle things that's the point if you if you had like multiple people playing you could possibly have someone just standing on the front of the engine and acting as like the driver's eyes if they can't see ahead all that well, especially over shunting. Actually, one thing I've just remembered is that because this climax has got bogies, it can, it should be able to take sharp curves a lot easier. Because uh, I'm thinking that um, with the tendering, when I've got like conventional tendering, which is like the Cook Mobile, the Rika, DNRG Class 70, and I'll probably have to try and make the tracks or the curves on the line on the rest of the network once once it's built. I'll have to try and make those curves as gentle as possible. Go. Yeah, that's right. I did put the. I just remembered to put the handbrakes on on a couple of wagons at the far end of the train, so I'll have to uh, release them before we head back. But as it stands now. What I'm attempting, to, what I'm, what I've essentially set, a, I've essentially set a goal for myself, and what to try to do in, in this game before I expand the network any further. So what I'm going to do eventually is also get a high slot. Actually, see how much money we've got. I don't know if this slot here would be enough to get us over the mark for buying a high slot. Hopefully. <laughs> That would actually be kind of a cool way to make a video to like park Climax and High Slip right alongside each other. Speaking of beard engines, I remember seeing on the disc on the Railroads Online Discord server some like development screenshots of a model for a shape. Which would be pretty impressive to see in this game considering like the that what I've seen with Climax and High Slip go by the shape would kind of complete the roster of the engines. Although saying that, uh, there was also the Lapis locomotive, which was essentially just a copy of a shag built by the company that made up the original Pegasus Fire. Beep! I think it was about finances. Finances. I saw in the comment yesterday, one of the comments someone did yesterday, I think it was a but I remember it some of the comments saying that it's, uh, that's... Why is it close to I remember someone saying that this is basically good to me. And I think, yeah, right. Yeah, good to me, short good to me. It's basically climax, but...
I can, I can stop again to put more wood on the fire. I remember with the porter engines that you can just chuck five bits of firewood on and like that's enough to get a full roaring fire. I'm not sure what the case I'm not sure what's the case with these gear engines, but that looks but that fire looks very strong. I might actually see if I'm getting to go all the way up to 100. Right, so this is a bit sick of it. No, I don't want the whistle. I can see that it's so. Um, I better make Actually, on that note, I think I'll stop it here to try and. No, I'm probably just thinking. Probably just think gravity doing the work to get us back to the uh, back to the depot. No, that's right, I was going to try and get enough wood on the fire to hopefully get that up to 100. Um, yeah, I mean I'm not all that sensitive to bright what I'm saying. Of course it's sensitive to bright lights. That is that light there is just about well, the firebox is just about blinding. Uh, it seems like the fire level on this thing can only go up to 75. But That's um, one thing I've never really, although I'm not saying it's realistic, I'm not saying this is like a problem that you need to do, but I don't really like how this board has this board turns so quickly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what purpose does the generator serve aside from the... 
aside from powering hit, aside from powering headlights. So I think I saw in some other engines like the 042 Porter that the headlights on that engine are not clicked from the generator. Not, like, not, not powered by the steam generators. So we're able to coast along with this at an acceptable speed and you have got the regulator on. I think if rolling resistance is bad, and set up in the set-up that turns out to be bad, that means, doesn't that mean like this, you lose speed far, relatively quickly on a like, middle track when you've got the like, throttle is idle and the brakes are released? I think I'll be the PTG Rail saying that would be once did a route-leading video on the Aurora to Chicago route and train simulator. I feel like every time I do one of these uh, gameplay videos, I end up na name dropping at least one other YouTube channel and it's not like I'm not obviously not like a suck up or anything I only bring up these channels if I, if I see it as relevant to to the video and what I'm actually talking about right so I think was that uh, so that's half the train we just managed to load or unload rather, so yeah, we'll have to reverse back again to unload the other five. Yeah, I was hoping to uh, get the entire uh, sawmill run with the climax in like one video without really having to split it up into two parts, but, but the main reason I did is just to make sure that I don't have one massively long video again. The last time I tried playing this game with that little with the 042 Porter over here, uh, that ended up being almost an hour. But no, I think eventually I'll probably just have the... Eventually I'll probably just have the Porter engines, like obviously Tessa there and Betsy over there. I'll probably just have those two just relegated and shunters. Yeah, because as it stands now, the engines essentially all have to fetch their own trains. And I like to think that they won't end up like uh, Henry, James and Gordon. No, the other way around. No, it's got numbers wrong. Henry, Gordon and James. And when they got sick of, like in those season one episodes where they got sick of having to fetch their own coaches and so they went on strike. And I think that was, yeah, it was around, I think the episode Trouble in the Shed. Or, no, Tenders and Turntables, I think, was when the three engines decided to go on strike. And then Tenders and Turn, no, sorry, Trouble in the Shed. Um, Trouble in the Shed, I think, was um, the episode that where Percy was introduced. And the Fat Controller brought him in to... Uh, like the Fat Controller brought him in to uh, to help keep the yard busy, but to help keep the yard going, while the other the three big tender engines were stuck up in the shed for being well, just a second ago, not strike. And then the episode Percy Runs Away happened. But no, that but yeah, this has uh, been my uh, the second part of my first look at the climax in Railroads in Line and yeah I, ho I do hope that you've enjoyed it and that you'll stick around for more Railroads in Line videos in the future and not just Railroads in Line but also all sorts of other games but anyway this is uh, TTFT signing off